there's a good chance that your art is not nearly as creative or as influential or as unique as it could be because your creativity has been slowly robbed by these different ideas that are slowly planted into your head over time as you share your artwork online. Now, trust me, I have experienced this in a huge way. I'm trying to become a successful independent artist from basically scratch, complete beginner and share everything with you all. And from doing that, I have a lot of attention on me and I get a lot of feedback on my work. And I'm starting to see that happen to a lot of other people. And I think it has been going on a lot. And I want to warn you of it. We're talking about same face syndrome. That's a really common one. Everyone's like on the same side of uh, we're talking about just being more diverse and adding more of this or that if you're not adding enough of it in your artwork. That's something everyone supports, you know? Just be draw different stuff. And then there's also my favorite. Why don't you draw men? You draw too many women. And sometimes some people say you draw too many men. Things like that slowly eat away at you without you even knowing. But the problem is a lot of it is masked with or it is truly coming from a more moral case. So they have a moral agenda that they're trying to add on to you as an artist. And my problem with that is that artists should really be free of any agenda. I see too many people trying to impose other agendas onto artists in a way that seems very authoritarian. And I see too many artists not questioning whether or not this is something that they listen to. Intention is everything when it comes to people telling you you should draw this or you shouldn't draw that. So the best way to go about this is to just know who you want to be as an artist. Know the things that you want to do paint, draw, know the places that you want to work, know the uh, types of content that you want to create, the story that you want to tell. And then when you get people telling you stuff as you should or you shouldn't, then you compare it. Well, does this match up with what my goal is? And if it does, cool, I'll just decide to take it in stride. But if it doesn't, you can pretty much forget it. You don't have to do it. Nobody's forcing you to. So why should you? Artists are free to be whoever they want to be within reason. Now, come on, you know, don't uh, disrespect individuals or groups of people. That's that's not cool. Now, a lot of you may be saying, well, Josh, I don't really know exactly what type of stuff I want to do, who I want to be, what I want to do when I grow up. Right. And I definitely feel you there. It's not easy to know exactly what type of stuff you want to make, especially when you're still learning. And for you, the best thing to do is to ask questions. So the first example that I have that I really like to use is same face syndrome. And some people have accused me of this a lot, which I think is pretty funny because I don't think I have it, but you know, it's subjective, art is subjective, right? I think it's honestly a pretty good thing to recognize. Faces are, you know, it's how we interact with each other. We look at each other's faces. You're looking at my face and it's unique. Do you guys like my haircut? And it tells its own story, especially as I age. That's important. It's very important to recognize different faces. But when you're just labeling it as a just a thing that applies to everybody. Same face syndrome, bad. You're, all your faces look the same. You're a bad artist, you're not good. But I'm gonna counter that, I don't think so. There's several amazing, successful artists who are in the hundreds of thousands of followers, making a complete living on their own, working with incredible collaborations that pretty much have same face syndrome across all their work. And I'm not gonna mention them because this is already seen as a negative to the majority of the art community, so I don't wanna be seen as like slandering them. Those artists are independent artists who are not focused on trying to create these diverse, vibrant worlds. They're just doing their own thing with their own interests. And then a lot of people like to criticize Disney and other animation studios like that. And the thing is, there's a lot of really good reasons to use it, especially if you look at anime. If you remove the hair and the clothing for a lot of anime characters, they will look exactly the same, regardless of what gender they are. But that doesn't really matter because you're looking at their character, right? Which is gonna show through their personality. Their hairstyles are just wildly different. The way they move is different. Their clothing is usually extremely indicative of their personality as well. And animators in the manga and animation industry in Japan know this, and they're also on extremely tight schedules. And so having the same face, which is usually one of the most difficult things to get right consistently as a character's moving around, just makes sense. And in the case of like Disney, uh, whether you like it or not, Disney is a big company trying to make money. Right. And one of the things you got to do is to maximize. you got to min and max. And so when you find a face that works, you just keep using that. I've talked about it in one of my videos about how to draw cute faces way earlier on in this channel. They figured out what works. 
the audience likes it they love it they come to see every single disney movie afterwards and then they just keep doing it right and especially on youtube and me being somebody in social media and seeing how audiences work when something works you don't question it you just keep doing it and you move on to the next if you are trying to do something out of the morality of just being unique and different cool that's great but if you want to be supported by it or successful in a financial way that doesn't always work and that's not something to shame people for now what i will say though is if you want to be able to draw more different faces again if you want to be a concept artist and you can't draw different faces you can't draw a different nose you can only draw one type of nose that's where you do need to start to draw different faces and people will call you out on that i watch a live stream on twitch called wild blue studios i believe that's the actual name of their studios and they actually critique people with that same criticism. They're like, oh, I remember a recent one. Um, the main host was talking about, I can tell there's this one nose you know how to draw and you draw it on all of your different characters. So you need to get better with your structure and your anatomy. And if you're like that, and that's the reason you're only doing the same faces, definitely that's a good reason for you to actually take that suggestion and do it. Now, the second one, right? Why do you draw, you should draw more men. You should draw more different genders, right? Well, yeah, that's a good thing, right? There's representation. There's multiple different types of people on the planet. There's not just women. There's not just men. There's both, right? And I'm saying this because this is always the criticism I get. It's always one or the other, and it's funny. What I should start doing is saying, uh, why are you assuming the gender of the person I'm painting? How dare you? But to get to the point, I think, again, it's something that's just what an artist wants to do maybe they're fascinated like me i'm fascinated with how streamlined and how aesthetic the female figure is and all the curves combined with the muscular and bony landmarks and all that stuff i love anatomy but when you judge someone for doing it too much usually it's coming from a place of some other agenda that you're trying to impose on them but another thing to think about is we're artists for a long time. Most people, the average, what, lifespan is around 70 plus years, right? It's probably higher. I could spend the entire first 45 years of my life drawing nothing but women and then suddenly start drawing men who are holding blue oranges, right? I've made this analogy somewhere else saying like pineapples and that could be my fixation and that's it, right? One of my favorite animations from Love, Death and Robots is called Zima Blue and the guy just started painting blue he just he used to start with portraits and he started painting a specific color everywhere and that was his thing and people loved it so why should he have to do everything else well if he's trying to be again a concept artist if he's trying to be an illustrator for different things like comics and magazines what have you yeah you're probably gonna want to learn how to draw all kinds of different body types but if you're just trying to, and I don't say just as in like it's inferior, but if you're just an illustrator and you just want to make your own paintings based off of your own subject matter, then who cares? Draw what you want. Why do you need to draw everything else? And you should think that way like, hmm, yeah, that's a good idea. But you know what? This is what I want to draw right now. Too bad. But again, at the same time, if you're like me and you have a little bit of trouble drawing men, then you should probably draw them, right? And if someone's like, yeah, 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 you're right, but there are some things that I can tell you would have a much easier time grasping about the human anatomy if you looked at it from the male figure. Oh, okay. Well, you can't refute them there, right? And obviously, I'm somebody who's trying to improve their anatomy. I've had people come to me and say that with that example specifically, and I'm like, damn, you know what? You're right. That is a very good reason to draw some men in my studies. And so there you go. It's completely fine to listen to these shoulds and should nots, but you know, take it with a grain of salt. And that definition means look at the intention and then look at who you want to be and just decide from there. And the last one I want to talk about is just adding more diversity. And you can add diversity with all kinds of things, but I'm going to talk more about people in general. What I want to point out is that the most important thing about the art community and its diversity is that it comes from the individual artist. It doesn't come from artists doing everything they can to do everything that needs to be done for the world. That's not our job. It's not an artist's job to support a huge cause if that's not something they're interested in or should even be involved in based off of their experience. Every artist's job is to add beauty to the world and add diversity by being uniquely them, being unapologetically 
yourself and doing the things that only you can do with your unique experiences. That is what adds an amazing, beautiful quality of diversity to all of the art out there. Try to be diverse by being you. Don't worry too much about doing every single thing and sharing every single thing that needs to be shared. That's just gonna make it bland and boring. We don't need everyone to be everything. We need you to do what you can do and to be who you are supposed to be. Personally, I have found a huge release from letting go of a lot of these ideas. Some of them are just like feeling like I can't draw with, like I can't keep drawing in black and white. I used to think that was just a bad thing. People will say you shouldn't draw with like an airbrush all the time. And I just found a really nice quality with my soft work, the soft quality of my work and my fans really enjoy that on Instagram. All of my followers always talk about that in my line work. I used to feel bad about to drawing too much instead of painting. People love how I draw and people love how I draw women. I've literally, they literally said that specifically. Every single thing, they love how I use pink. That's been my thing and it's continuing to evolve. And I'm learning to be a lot more proud of that. And I hope that you can too, as you discover who you are as an artist. So if you've liked any of the artwork you've seen in this video, or you just want to see more of the art I've been talking about, uh, you should be sure to check out my Instagram page. That's where you see most of my artwork, not in my thumbnails. Don't be scrolling through my YouTube videos and then talking about me as an artist by just looking at my thumbnails. It's getting old. Um, but also check out my Patreon if you want to see really, really in-depth um, breakdowns of how I create my artwork and what I'm thinking about. Um, and let me know if you're just interested in something that you don't see on there as well. I'm thinking about adding channel memberships to YouTube here. Um, I've asked you guys in an earlier stream whether or not you would feel more comfortable supporting me on the same platform versus going somewhere else like Patreon. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what kind of content you would like from me here on YouTube if I do YouTube memberships. I probably will just to try it out. Won't hurt, right? Um, and yeah, check out my live streams as well. I just did one a couple days ago on Friday. I'm going to try to do at least one weekly here on YouTube going forward. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about this video. Let me know if you vehemently disagree, if you agree, what your thoughts are, if you've noticed that there's any other ideas that have slowly crept into your mind and been cemented as fact. Um, I'd love to know about them because a lot of these ideas are great and they're perfectly good to recommend for people, but it doesn't mean that it's fact and it doesn't absolutely does not mean that everybody needs to do it. Everyone is unique and has their own goals and aspirations and points in their learning progress process that they should worry about. So yeah, I'm not saying censorship, but just be aware, look at intent, look at yourself, ask yourself who you want to be and ask others for more information and you'll be good to go. So thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Peace. Keep drawing and stay positive. It's the crowd of motorcyclists. They just drive around every single evening. Gotta wait for them. Maybe this is picked up, maybe it isn't, I don't know. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Motorcycles. The bane of my existence. It used to be lawnmowers and now it's motorcycles. <laughs>